Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome once again to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel. I am recording this video on Friday the 13th. Hopefully we'll all be lucky this weekend and WWE continues the streak of great pay-per-view events. We have Night of Champions coming up. NoDQ.com, your source for everything regarding Night of Champions. With that being said, let's get right down to your questions from FormSpring, or should I say Spring.me slash I'm, st I'm still trying to get used to the adjustment here, the name change. Um, FormSpring to Spring.me, whatever. All right, first one today comes from StingHBK316. Do you see Triple H bringing in Matt Morgan to feud with the Big Show? That's actually an interesting idea. That might be a solid way to utilize Matt Morgan and bring him in as Triple H's muscle. The thing is that Triple H already has the shield as his backup, so why would he need Matt Morgan? Um, but it would be kind of cool to have uh, Matt Morgan versus the big show, the Battle of the Giants. Um, but with that being said, I haven't heard anything about Matt Morgan coming in and... Uh, Maybe that's a sign that he is coming in, the fact that it's been downplayed and there hasn't been much talk about him, um, and he's just laying low until the opportunity comes to uh, make a big impact. So, um, you know, it, it, it could happen, and um, yeah, I, I think that that would be an effective way to have him return and come in to feud with Big Show, no doubt. All right, this one comes from JVCMRVD. Hi, Aaron. Do you think that Edge will be included in the McMahon storyline or another storyline at some point? Please answer in video. Or I just said please answer, actually. I'm so used to the please answer in video here. Here's the thing about Edge. He came back largely to promote his television show, Haven, or whatever show he's doing. I know he's doing a ghost show. I saw something after sci-fi. So I know he's got a bunch of different projects going on. And uh, the timing was just right for him. He wanted to promote his show, and WWE Raw just happened to be in his hometown of Toronto. So, um, you know, all the stars aligned for him to come back and make a special appearance. Is he going to be involved in the storyline on a regular basis? No, it's not going to happen. He's got other things going on, and um, he might make a cameo every now and then. I know WWE wants to sign him to a Legends contract. But he seems to be hesitating. I think that he is happy and satisfied doing other things outside of wrestling. And if I was him, I would want to stay away too. Because if you come back and uh, you're standing in the ring and everybody's cheering for you, you get the itch to come back. You, you, you get upset that your, your body has uh, broken down on you and you can't do it anymore. So, you know, on one way, it, it's fun to go out there. But the other way... Um, you know, you're depressed because you're out there and you can only do so much. So from Edge's standpoint, I could see him wanting to just keep his distance and only make appearances every now and then when he's got something to promote. All right, this one comes from Rob Harrison 96 Hey Aaron, do you think since WWE has dropped the King of the Ring concept that it's contributed to the lack of building main event superstars? As King of the Ring helps stars like Austin, Triple H, Bret Hart, and Brock Lesnar, many thanks, love the show. Um, King of the Ring wasn't that big of a deal, as you, as you mentioned here, in terms of building up future stars. Certainly it helped a little bit, but you know there were also a lot of King of the Ring flops, namely Billy Gunn. So it's not like winning the King of the Ring instantly made you a star. It definitely helped um, you know, elevate you as a, as a big star because you won that that one night tournament and uh, you know it, it gets you over in that regard but it wasn't the end all be all when it came to building new stars um, but with that being said I've talked about it before I would love to see it come back I think it was a really entertaining concept and um, I liked the idea of a one night tournament with the winner getting a title shot at SummerSlam much like the Royal Rumble winner gets a title shot I, I just thought that that was a good idea um, you know, building up to SummerSlam to have the King of the Ring winner be the number one contender. But, you know, WWE uh, has decided it's not worth bringing back, and they've had opportunities and they haven't done it. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think that perhaps one day we will see King of the Ring again, but at this point I'm thinking it's not going to happen anytime in the near future. All right, this one comes from Copland08. Hello, Aaron. My favorite JR moment, in my humble opinion, is when he was in the ring with Steve Austin drinking some cold ones. 
I grew up on the I grew up with this man as an announcer and believe he is the best ever in that role. What is your number one? Well, if you watch the video I did about Jim Ross retiring, you know, I called him the best announcer in the history of wrestling. That's how I feel. And um, you know, Gordon Soley's definitely up there. You know, some people said that he's number one. Um, I, I especially think older fans feel that way. But the thing about Jim Ross is that he was the number one announcer during the hottest period in wrestling history when wrestling was at its uh, greatest worldwide success Jim Ross was the voice of the hottest product in the world um, you know during the Attitude Era and Jim Ross just had all those classic lines and um, you know he was just so emotional and so passionate uh, when he was doing commentary I, I, I don't think anybody will ever top him I mean Gordon Soley was great but you know he's a very old school announcer um, back when wrestling was still in its territory days and uh, you know Jim Ross at the level he was at in terms of his success and worldwide fame you know the whole package I, I just don't see anybody uh, measuring up to that level alright this one comes from Mr. Dobby let's see hey Aaron love the show please answer in video what do you feel about Jim Ross retiring from WWE and do you think he will take over TNA I feel that if anyone at this point can save TNA, it would be JR, and to add, he was leaving for business endeavors. A lot of people are speculating now about Jim Ross and TNA. I suppose it's just a natural feeling to think maybe he'll consider going to TNA at some point, and uh, Dixie Carter was very quick to uh, tweet him and uh, put him over. I'm sure that she would love to have Jim Ross in her company. Um, and would he do it? I mean, I think that you would have to ask him. I think if the money was right and uh, there was an opportunity to do something big, I think him, like anybody else, would at least consider the offer. So, I mean, I wouldn't rule out him going to TNA. I, I seem to think that it's a long shot. I, I think that uh, Jim Ross's attitude might be that if he's not going to work for the top company, he might as well just do other things and not burn that bridge, keep the door open for a possible return to WWE. And uh, if if the rumors are true that he was let go and the whole retirement thing was to save face, I could see them bringing him back at some point. If there's enough backlash or if Michael Cole suddenly quits or something happens with the announcers or some sort of shakeup and they need to give JR a call and bring him back. So because of that, I, I think Jim Ross is going to leave that door open and just pursue his other uh, business endeavors like the barbecue business. And um, I, I, I just don't see him going to TNA. I, I think it's unlikely. All right, this one comes from Pika Blue 183 Hey, Aaron, love the show. But what did you think of Tajiri's heel run in WWE with the whole Tory Wilson storyline? I personally didn't like it and think he works best as a face. Thanks. Completely agree with you. Tajiri is another one of those guys that he's known for his flashy moves and he's a high flyer and he's not a very good promo. Those kind of guys are best off staying as baby faces. And um, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of him being a heel and, um, you know, it didn't last. I mean, people remember Tajiri as the guy that did all those cool moves and uh, did the mist and, uh, you know, he was just a, a very entertaining performer in the ring. That's what people remember him for, not for being a heel. Um, so, yeah, definitely uh, wasn't a big fan of that heel turn. All right, this one comes from DB123YES. Hey, Aaron, much love from Iowa. Thank you. Do you think WWE expects us all to just forget about the matches between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton earlier this summer? Randy Orton tapped out to Daniel Bryan in the street fight. Short answer is yes. WWE does expect you to not remember that. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why they haven't brought that up on television. Um, the fact that Daniel Bryan did tap out Randy Orton several months ago. Obviously, in storyline, the heels aren't going to bring up the... Daniel Bryan beat beat Randy Orton. You know, Randy Orton's not going to say that. Triple H isn't going to say that from a storyline perspective. But you would think like the announcers or somebody would would mention that Daniel or Daniel Bryan himself would mention that he tapped out Randy Orton. Um, I guess they feel it's not necessary for the story. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that there's been absolutely no mention of that, and it just it, it feels like it would have been a good. Um, 
logical step. You know, Daniel Bryan taps out Randy Orton to get revenge. Randy Orton cashes in money in the bank on Daniel Bryan and, uh, you know, gets his payback. So, you know, that, that seems like the logical way to go, but they, they for whatever reason, they didn't, they didn't bring it up at all. All right, this one comes from Mr. Jesse Long. Hey, Aaron, please answer in video. Do you think the Santino return segment against Antonio Cesaro would have been better served as a main roster debut moment for Sami Zayn? I feel they should strike while the iron is white hot for Sami. Um, well, they could feel that it's perhaps too soon to debut him on the main roster. And, um, you know, I, I think that it's better to hold off and bring him in when you're ready and you have something uh, concrete for him to do rather than bring him in when you feel it's too soon and uh, you don't really have um, something for him. So in, in that regard, it might be best to wait off. I mean, it, it would have been a cool idea to have him show up on Raw in Toronto. I think he would have gotten a great reaction. And, um, you know, I, I think it, it's getting close to the time to bring him in. I have this feeling when they bring in the, the Matadors, whatever that gimmick is, I mean, I think that's going to flop big time and, you know, people are going to think of Generico when, when uh, those guys come out. They're going to do the lay chance, but for uh, El Generico. So, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I do think that they should bring him in fairly soon. And, um, you know, I, I, I think he's got a lot of potential to make it. And, um, you know, I was surprised when they signed him because I felt that um, while he was a tremendous performer, and I, I always thought... You know, I used to go to the PWG shows back in 2006, 2007, and almost every show um, he put on the match of the night, in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, I, I knew he was extremely talented way back then, but I just felt that his gimmick was uh, very indie, and, uh, you know, he didn't have the, the WWE body. But, um, you know, I, I, I think that he, he definitely looks more like a WWE star now without the mask, and... Uh, from what I've seen in the NXT videos, it looks like he's put on a little bit more muscle mass. So, you know, I, I think he's got a good shot to make it in WWE. So uh, let's just hope for the best with him. And, um, you know, if he gets his opportunity, I think he will definitely run with the ball. All right, this one comes from Daniel N. 1995. Hey, Aaron, how do you think Bully Ray's career will be affected after Aces and Eights break up? Um, regarding Bully Ray... And um, what's going to happen after Aces and Eights? I I think that it would be a positive. I think ending Aces and Eights will be a good thing for just about everybody. Maybe not the Garrett Bischoffs of the world, but um, I think for Bully Ray, he doesn't need Aces and Eights. I think that uh, he's over as a heel on his own, and um, I'm sure he'll do just fine. I don't think it's going to have any negative effect on his career. If anything, it should be a positive. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and A video. Thank you for checking out the videos. Uh, keep subscribing, youtube.com slash no DQ C A W. Tell a friend on Facebook or Twitter, and I will see you guys next time for more No DQ and A video.